everyone, I'm very excited that we have Vic from um, Alliances at GitLab here. Vic, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for this invite. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so particularly the reason why I'm, <laughs> I'm excited about this session is that Vic is actually responsible for the GitLab Red Hat Alliance, and I used to work at Red Hat. So. Um, yeah, and then just a brief overview of what we're talking about today. We're gonna to talk about what alliances are about, um, what these people do for those of y'all that are out there in the audience thinking maybe this is a move for me. Um, Vic will give us the insider scoop on, uh, you know, just uh, what the day-to-day -day looks like. And we'll also talk about like career progression, right? So, um, you know, if you're someone who's thinking about maybe one day getting into alliances, then we'll hear a little bit about Vic's personal story. But yeah, just starting out, Vic, I'd love to hear a little bit about your professional journey um, in a couple of minutes. So it's just sort of like, what steered you towards alliances? Um, and, um, you know, tell me just a little bit about like, how you ended up in the position that you're in now today. Yeah, happy to do that. Uh, so let me give you guys a very, you know, brief overview. Let me focus on the last 10 years of my career. Uh, you know, for the last seven or eight years, I have been focusing on being a product manager, right? So in that capacity, as a product manager, you know, you're looking at markets, you're looking at addressable markets, and then you're trying to decide on one big thing, which is should you build a product feature or should you, you know, go buy a company that will help you accelerate uh, your product adoption, right? So from a product perspective, that's what I used to focus on is what features do I need to build? What product do I need to build? What is the pain point that is solving for the customer? Now here at GitLab, I have taken a slightly different role. And uh, to me, it's an extension, and I will explain that in a bit. Uh, in alliances, uh, I have joined alliances, so focusing on strategic alliances, like you mentioned, you know, Red Hat, IBM, uh, I'm also looking after Azure and Azure Marketplace uh, to name some of the strategic uh, partnerships or alliances. Uh, but, you know, going back to my point, um, you know, pivoting from product to alliances. Um, so now I'm adding not only a build or buy, but now I'm adding and I'm focusing on the third aspect, which is should the organization focus on partnerships? Right, uh, we don't have to build or buy ourselves. Maybe we can partner with uh, another organization that may have a shared role. Uh, so that's what I'm focusing on here at GitLab. Uh, I used to be Pivotal, which is now part of VMware. I'm also helping out with that partnership. So let me stop there as a you know, two minute introduction to my background and what I'm focusing on, but you can absolutely you know, expand on any area you're interested in focusing on. Yeah, thanks for telling your story. I think that that's really interesting. One of the things that I've always kind of wondered about is what's the intersection between channel and alliances? So for those on this call that are listening in, um, channel a lot of the times is just resellers, right? Um, but uh you know so it's like almost like alliances are similar but they're somewhat different can you tell me about like in the business ecosystem how people usually demarcate between these two yeah i mean you know both of, both of them sort of fall under partnerships right so you have channel partners and then you have strategic partners but essentially it's an umbrella of partnerships now that there are some differences obviously uh, channel covers a lot of the area. Uh, so, you know, you have system integrators, uh, you have service providers, you have resellers. Uh, they all sort of fall in channel. And, you know, you sometimes say, hey, let's meet in the channel because that's a way of distributing your product and sort of using the network effect of finding your partners, sellers to help you sell your product, right? So 
that to me is more on the channel side and there you know michelle has a very big organization that is focusing on channel uh, so i fall under on the other side which is the strategic partnerships so i report to brandon you know, who's vp of alliances and what we focus on in alliances is uh, the strategic nature of these partnerships right so if you think about you know is the cloud provider a strategic partner right can they help us accelerate deals and we have to take a little bit of a strategic angle view uh, when you talk about partnerships and alliances uh, because in alliances it's a it's a long-term sort of relationship you have to foster and develop um, over a period of a few quarters uh, and for that you need to understand uh, not only the market positions of your partner but you also need to figure out you know if there is a competitive angle uh, and then sort of you know pursue that, that partnership going in knowing that there may be some conflict right uh, because GitLab covers so many different stages of uh, DevOps as the platform, uh, you will inherently have some overlap with your strategic partner uh, because they may be developing a product or a feature uh, where we also may be interested in expanding our product footprint. So understanding that dynamics uh, is important. Uh, when you're trying to develop and build that alliance relationship. Yeah, that's actually really, really interesting to me. And when I first realized that we had an alliance relationship with Red Hat, I immediately thought to myself, yes, you know, get the GitLab Kubernetes play is there. Um, but on the other hand, Ansible Tower, which is one of Red Hat's products, has some overlap with what GitLab actually brings to the table. So I'm actually really curious about that. So in these meetings that you have with these other Alliance companies, um, how do you navigate some of, uh, I'm, I'm actually curious, like if I were in these meetings, like how, bring me inside your mind, like what are you thinking about and how do you position things and um, how do you navigate some of that conflict? Yeah, no, that's a good question. So I mean, since you came from Red Hat, right, let me focus on that partnership and that alliance. And uh, you obviously have expertise there. So it'll be a good conversation to have with you um, around, you know, how I'm thinking. And maybe, you know, you can give me some you know, insider tips on Ansible and how to think about the Ansible ecosystem. Right. So, so you know, going back to your question, you know, how do you think about developing this partnership right well red hat and its parent company ibm right their focus now is on you know, open shift and containers and containerization right so from that perspective uh, we, we don't have any conflict there right we don't have a kubernetes distribution that we are trying to socialize and evangelize so from that perspective, you know, it's very clear there's no conflict there. Now the question becomes, do you want to participate in the OpenShift ecosystem? And you know, Red Hat is developing an ecosystem. They are building a set of ISVs. ISVs are independent software vendors, right? So they are positioning themselves as an ecosystem or platform player. Um, the foundational piece of that is OpenShift. Now, the question for us becomes, do we want to be part of that you know, ecosystem and do we want to participate and be you know, a, a, a premier or a featured you know, software vendor uh, for OpenShift, right? So they have this concept of operators. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but that's their play on you know how they think about uh, how to package software right so operators in a very quick overview it's about kubernetes ecosystem and how to introduce domain knowledge uh, in a kubernetes cluster like OpenShift. right so this is not a technical talk but that's the quick overview of what an operator is so 
So the question from an alliances and strategic partnership becomes, should we integrate with OpenShift? Should we you know, look at operator approach? Because um, the other, op other option is a Helm chart, right? Both are valid and both work um, well on a Kubernetes cluster. So those kind of questions and concerns are things you have to think about when you are talking about partnerships and how partners product, right? So let me, let me pause there and just do a quick check. Is that making sense? I'm happy to kind of expand on that answer and continue this conversation, but at the very basic level, you know, that's what you're trying to do. And then I can kind of go a little bit deeper if you want and double click on it and we can continue this uh, example. Yeah. Um, so, Yeah, um, help me help me understand a little bit about like the day to day. Um, so I'm walking through like this uh, example and just trying to understand the story of you just pictured, but you mentioned three things, Ansible, OpenShift, um, and then uh, the Jure marketplace. But like on a day to day level, like um, what are some of the decisions and things that you're thinking about? What are some of the meetings that you're having? How often are these meetings with like the actual alliances themselves versus with product and stuff? And then so like from my simple understanding as someone who's never done this before, um, like it seems to me that like the answer for a lot of these is either yes or no, right? Like, yes, we would wanna integrate with OpenShift because if Red Hat includes OpenShift, it includes GitLab with OpenShift and we get more market share, right? Um, so it's just sort of like, I'm having a little bit of trouble understanding about like all of the other things that go into the picture. It just seems kind of like, tell me more about like what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, that's a good one. So, you know, first of all, Alliances does sit in sales, right? So our sort of, guiding principle is, hey, how do we amplify uh, the message that has been set by you know, the sales leadership, by the CRO, uh, Michael, right? And how do we amplify that in the market? So we also have to you know, take that into consideration is, you know, hey, do we want to go after containerized workloads? Is that gonna get us you know, is this partnership going to get us, you know, it's the same sort of OKRs that are mentioned from, you know, Sid and the CEO all the way down is, will this allow us to get into a new market? Will it allow us to get some new logos or will it help us expand the footprint we have uh, through some partner influence, right? So if I yeah. take OpenShift again as an example, OpenShift is pretty big in public sector, right? Uh, air gap networks, uh, financial services companies are kind of gravitating towards that Kubernetes distribution. Now that doesn't mean that you know, GKE or EKS are not growing or they're not good for our customers. Uh, I'm just looking at the verticals, right? Where OpenShift is putting their efforts and what are they focusing on? And can we you know, do some joint marketing with them or along those lines, right? Can we go target some financial institutions, some insurance companies that may have some regulations, and, you know, regulatory requirements for their Kubernetes clusters? And if the customer is saying, hey, I wanna adapt OpenShift because of the security compliance, audit and traceability reasons, uh, then you know we, we have to help the customer achieve their objective and I think you know getting to OpenShift may be one way of doing that and then there are other aspects of the partnership as well right uh, since you were involved with Ansible you know that's another big play uh, that Red Hat is doing uh, it is it is a revenue you know, generator for Red Hat uh, we have a very good story with GitOps, right? And uh, 
CI you know, pipelines that we use to do infrastructure as code, where Ansible can be part in, you know, of our CI pipelines, right? So you have to look at it from our perspective and to see, hey, can we drive business for our partner? And can we also uh, you know, get some business in return? I think that's, that's the story we are trying to weave with our partner, you know, trying to create a win-win situation so that this sure. partnership continues to grow. Yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing that. I think, so how much of that is like solving a problem and how much of that is just building relationships with relevant stakeholders in our alliance relation and our alliance organizations, right? So I guess uh, I'm seeing two sides of the fence here, right? So one's almost like a math problem. Hey, we can have a win-win situation if we co-sell here and if I actually implement some of your functionality here so that we don't do it and we save our engineers time. It's a hypothetical situation, right? So part of that is that like analytical left brain optimization problem. And then the other part of it is that the other organization's not gonna take action unless like I have their trust and I've built a relationship with them. So uh, is that a large part of the job too? Where it's like, um, I remember when I was in sales, like we taking all these customers out to lunch and ultimately we're just trying to build a relationship with them, right? Is that a large part of the Alliance job where it's like you're working with the Alliance manager at Red Hat and these other places and just really trying to make sure that so to summarize, like how much are relationships a part of alliances? Any partnership, right? A relationship is important, but it has to have a good foundation, right? Uh, the way we think about it in alliances is we can think about it in three terms, right? Are we gonna co-develop and co-engineer something together, right? Uh, that's one aspect. Uh, another aspect could be, hey, we wanna go you know, do some marketing, co-marketing uh, at some joint events or joint webinars, right? And kind of pool our resources and make sure our messaging is complementary to each other and is helping each other out. And obviously the third one that you touched on is code to sell, which does, you know, require some relationship building as you mentioned. But if you, you know, it, it covers the entire spectrum, right? And Alliances, you know, I don't do this alone. Uh, as I am forming that partnership outside, I have to have a very strong partnership inside the organization, yeah, right? that's interesting. I have to work with product, I have to work with engineering, I have to work with leadership to see if we need to change a priority of a particular partnership, right? Because from a product perspective, you know, they have 100 priorities that they are focusing on, and here comes Vic, who is bringing in a partner priority. So, you know, I have to build that business case and check the product engineering and others in the organization, right? Marketing is, will be involved as well. Uh, so it, it's a relationship building exercise internally as well as externally. So I think sometimes people don't realize that, hey, you have to have a strong internal relationship before you can go external. That's interesting. Thanks for answering that. I, I have, uh, so one thing that you mentioned earlier that I wanna circle back on and that's really interesting to me is that you are you actually sit in the sales organization. Um, so talk to me about like how the compensation structure for people in alliances work. Is it that like, so for instance, is it like, uh, did you have a quota or is it just sort of like all of the money that comes in from a certain alliance partner, then that's like part of your quota or like how, how typically is like a compensation package for someone in alliances structured? Yeah, a good question, right? So I have seen it, uh, okay, compensation, you know, again, this is very public, right? So you can go to the compensation calculator and how it, and numbers wise, but from my experience, it can go both ways. And what I mean by both ways is uh, I have seen, uh, you know, 
partnerships and alliances team sort of focus on uh, quota, which may be, you know, sell with and a sell to, right? And I have seen them not focus on quotas either because, uh, you know, from a strategic perspective, right? Um, some of those relationships take time to develop and take time to deliver, right? So that's not something you can do in a quarter. So it's a, you know, it's a leadership decision on how you want the team to focus on and what should they focus on, right? Because if you, uh, let's say, if you give a quota, uh, then, you know, my focus is going to be to focus on hitting that target, right, this quarter. And for example, Red Hat may not happen in one quarter. Right? Yeah. It may take two or three quarters because the challenge there is I'm not dealing with GitLab team members, right? I'm dealing with an entirely different organization. They have different set of priorities. So for me to have a, a target date of let's say, you know, October 6th, that may not be achievable un unless we reach an alignment between the two organizations like hey we need to hit this target and then we start having weekly meetings and stand-ups to keep each other accountable and drive towards that shared goal right so i'm probably not answering your question completely but the way i would structure it is depends on you know what we are driving towards right because if we are trying to enter new markets or we are building relationships uh, inside of cloud providers. You know that that does take time, but the benefits and the outcome. You know, I think if you saw what uh, Michael McPhee said in yesterday's sales call, right? The Google partnership is an exact is a great example, right? Mayank has been working on my colleague Mayank has been working on Google for you know. I've been here six months and he's been here two years, right? So he's been working on the Google relationship for a lot longer. But what he accomplished, you know, just the last week uh, when we closed that partnership uh, contract is simply amazing. But that took, you know, at least multiple quarters is what I will leave it at. So it's not a you know, per quarter goal or per quota. It's a longer, longer view perspective, I would say. Gotcha. I always thought that one of the things that was kind of interesting about alliances is that in the Kubernetes play, that's a Red Hat alliance, but you also have a peer who works for us who manages the VMware alliance. And so for those that are listening, VMware and Red Hat are actually competitors and they're both specifically Kubernetes competitors. So I always thought that it was interesting to, to me that like, I, I guess like to rephrase, we want an alliance with both because if they pitch GitLab, then GitLab wins, right? Um, but it's almost like we're selling to both companies. Um, yeah, so I, I just, I always find that kind of interesting. Well, you know, you want to think about uh, the overall market, right? And you want to focus on what the customer wants to do, right? It's not what we want to do. It's not you know, going back to your point, like it's not something that we just want to do that integration for the integration's sake, right? There has to be a customer demand driving that integration. Uh, same way, you know, there's Google Anthos, which is a Kubernetes play. There's VMware Tanzu, again, Kubernetes play. Red Hat OpenShift, Kubernetes play. And AWS has its own Kubernetes and container uh, you know, orchestration platform right so uh, I, I don't think they work exclusively you know with other ISVs software providers similarly we should not also just kind of focus in on just one of those Kubernetes distribution right we want to address the pain point the customer is trying to solve with a container solution um, but the decision about which container platform they're going to pick is not a decision we can influence or we want to influence, right? Each one of these platforms has a strong position on, there is some differentiating factor, right? Between Google Anthos, 
VMware Tanzu and Red Hat OpenShift. So, uh, you know, we want to be good partners to them. We are very transparent as a company. So, you know, we do tell the partners that, hey, we are not building a mutually exclusive relationship here. We are working with some of the other platform providers in the market because the customer has asked for that. Right? So for me, the, the focus is always, do we have a customer in mind? Do we have a use case uh, to build this partnership on? Right? Because otherwise, there's just too many companies out there where we will just continue to integrate and not necessarily you know, reach the customer. So my first question always is, you know, hey, do we have a customer in mind? And can we take that customer on this journey with us as we build out that integration, right? So, and Red Hat has been, in my experience, has been you know, forthcoming. Like we, we just had a product management sync meeting where the product managers got together and discussed you know, what the integrations will look like for, and what is a potential customer, or at least identify a particular you know, product vertical where it can be applied very quickly after the integration is done. That's really interesting. Well, I really appreciate you uh, sharing your story. Um, this was super knowledgeable even for me. Um, I uh, just tying things back together. Um, I'm curious for those in our audience that are thinking like, wow, this sounds really interesting. I really like what Vic just shared. I really like how strategic it is, how um, you're thinking long term to solve business problems and to ultimately expand our market. Um, so my last two questions are, what type of people do you think would be, so like, let's just say that um, you're a hiring manager for people and alliances and you're interviewing all of these people. Some of these candidates come from Google, big, you know, fang tech companies, stuff like that. So what are the things that you look for in a candidate and what would be your advice to someone who's trying to eventually pivot into alliances? And so the first part of the question, obviously they have to have the experience, but in terms of the actual personality characteristics, so like strategic, good at public speaking, good at building relationships, I'm curious as to, um, yeah, so just to summarize, I'm curious as to the type of people that you'd look for, um, both from an experience and personality point of view, and then also what your advice would be to someone who's trying to pivot and think about this for their career. Yeah, man, you saved the tough ones for the last one, right? But uh. <laughs> you know, it's always it's always very um, subjective, right? The answers, you know, it may be different. If you ask my VP, he will have a slightly different answer, but here's, here's my perspective on those uh, you know, questions. You know, first of all, you have to think about alliances, right? You, when you walk in into a conversation or when you're trying to negotiate uh, you know, a, a partnership, uh, you're representing the company, right? So it, it's, it's important for you to understand the product. It's important for you to know the market dynamics, right? I think you picked up on it very quickly. The VMware Tanzu versus the Red Hat OpenShift, right? The competitive nature and the competitive aspect of it. So having that sort of understanding of the market and uh, the different players in the market uh, really helps uh, when you are you know, trying to join the alliances team. Or for that matter, it's also important, you know, when you are in channel, right? You're like, which channel partners should you go after, right? Which service integrators should you work with? And the more important question becomes which ones you sh should not work with, right? So a little bit of analytical skills, understanding the market dynamics, you know, soft skills become very important, ability to speak, and listen, right? It's it's also true in sales, right? Um, you want to hear the customer, not just you know tell them about your product, right? You want to solve their problem. You want to understand what strategy they are going after and how you can play a part in it. So it's a little bit of soft skills, you know, ability to continue a conversation, right? Because you may become 
uh, the person who will be used as the primary person to talk to the next organization or the other organization, right? So strong opinions are important, but they should be loosely held. That's what I would say in alliances. It's okay to advocate for your product, but at the same time, you also need to understand the other side and try to look for that win-win situation. So I don't know, to summarize, I would say I'm looking for somebody, you know, who will have that market dynamics, you know, knowledge, and maybe a little bit diplomatic in nature, right? Because there will be some tough conversations, there will be conflict and ability to resolve those conflicts uh, whilst, you know, making sure that you don't, you know, destroy the partnership, right? Uh, there will be conflicts. Every partnerships will have conflicts and your ability to deal with those conflicts, uh, you know, in a professional manner, in a diplomatic manner uh, will be important. So if you're thinking about a career in this, that's what I would say is try to develop a little bit of your soft skills um, and try to you know, start being a little bit diplomatic, but that doesn't mean you know you should not advocate for your product, right? So it's a fine line. You know, but I think that's what I would be looking for uh, if you know if you want to talk. And you know, I'm happy to have coffee chats with others on this topic. I will be happy to expand on my personal journey. It, 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 and you know, just taking a step back, it's never a straight line, right? Just from my personal experience. Uh, I have done engineering, I have done product, uh, I have done a little bit of marketing. Now I'm in sales and alliances, right? So uh, try to, try to you know, look for areas of interest that um, will excite you. And, uh, and it's also a little bit of an organizational structure you know, thing where some people like big organizations where everything is codified and has been already been regimented and they just have to follow a checklist but if you come to a startup you will actually grow and learn more because nothing has been defined and it gives you an opportunity to define the process and um, and that's how you will grow by doing so let me stop there hopefully i answered your questions uh, if not we can continue this uh, individually on some coffee chats yeah, absolutely. I appreciate your time, Vic. Thanks for telling your story. And for those of y'all out there that are listening to this, um, take care.